All right, guys. So um, it's the latest addition to the Ox Tool Shop. Um, it's a little Amco seven-inch shaper. Um, I think these were marketed by uh, Delta uh, back in the day. Uh, this is a pretty old one, actually. It's got a tag on the other side uh, that says "War Finish" on it, so it's going to be uh, World War II vintage. Um, it's got a few little problems, uh, nothing too, uh, too major. We're going to do a little survey here and kind of go over it, uh, take a look at it and uh, some of the features that, uh, that it has. Uh, it's, a cute little, uh, <laughs> it's a cute little shaper and if you're going to play with a shaper this is probably a, uh, um, a good, oh, there's a little crack right there I just noticed. Um, it's a good little size to uh, you know, kind of start out on uh, as opposed to buying one that weighs, you know, three tons or something like that. So uh, anyway, we're going to kind of go over this and we'll take a look at it and, uh, and talk about some of the, uh, the features. I'm learning about it myself. So uh, I've actually never run a shaper in my whole career. So uh, which is, uh, I don't know, I don't know if that's amazing or not amazing or what, um, but I'm looking forward to playing around with this. Uh, long term, um, I don't know what we'll do with this. Uh, it's kind of neat for certain kinds of things, odd dovetails. Uh, internal keyways, things like that, uh, that are difficult to do any other way. So let's pop around the other side. We'll take a look at it, and uh, we'll do a little uh, little tour. Okay, so here's the uh, this is kind of the business end here. This is where all the, uh, the magic happens. So now you know there's some shaper guys out there. So uh, forgive me because I may uh, kind of uh, butcher some of the names here. So uh, for the different things. So first off, let's look at this. We got a, a vise that swivels around, uh, pretty much all the way around. Uh, normally you'd use it kind of like that, uh, which always struck me as odd uh, that uh, you know, you're kind of cutting against the, the moving jaw of the, uh, of the shaper. So I always thought that was kind of strange. Normally, you know, in a milling machine, when you have high load, you go against the, the fixed jaw, but obviously that makes it kind of tricky. Anyway, just just an observation on my part. Now it's got this this block here that's grooved in a bunch of different ways and it looks like this vise can go on the side here. There's a hole through it. Uh, there's a there's a nut underneath that uh, that locks this thing down and then there's a scale let's see me rotate it around. There's a scale on the side here and it looks like it's got some keys so that you can lock this in at uh, uh, 90 degree increments as well. So it's kind of neat. Um, so there was a couple things that were kind of, I would say, jammed up on it. Let's uh, let's raise this up a little bit. So it's got a little uh, a lead, a vertical lead screw here, and it goes through, and it's got a little bevel gear to to change directions there, uh, which makes this a little bit high force here. So I think this is just for gross adjustments, um, and then um, you do your you have increments here. Let's see, can you see that? Uh, it's just out of the frame on the. Uh, this top slide here, it's got a, a graduated dial. Now, dang, once again, right out of the frame, huh? Okay, I need to reframe this a little bit. All right, that's a little better. So the first thing that was kind of kind of jammed that I freed up was this foot here. Uh, this is a support foot. So I think you make your, your gross adjustments, set this foot down, lock that little monkey down, and then that firms up this whole mess here. And then up here, you make your, your precision depth cuts here because this is a graduated dial here. And uh, this is our clapper box, I think is what this is called. And this, uh, let's see here. I got enough tools here now that I can. So this, uh, this head rotates so you can, uh, you can feed down at an angle. Okay, so you can feed down, da 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 da. Uh, and this would be for something like cutting dovetails, external or. Uh, uh, or kind of internal dovetails, so you can swivel that around. And then the clapper box also rotates, which is important to set for on the retract stroke uh, so the tool doesn't drag. So let's set that back to vertical there, okay? Um, let's see, let's go back up a little bit. So this is cross feed here, okay? Now this has a feed mechanism and we're missing, uh, there's a little detent or a little pawl that goes in there. There's a, there's a gear, a feed gear in there. And we'll turn this on and we'll run it a little bit so you guys can see how this operates. But this, this kind of increments the do 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 
do do do do. This increments the uh, the cross slide, so you can actually feed across the surface. So, um, and uh, that stroke is governed by by this little uh, this little slider crank here. Okay, let's make sure you can see that. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, this is a little hand operated, and then this is the uh, this is the main stroke mechanism here. So this is the stroke of the ram here is set with this little guy. Now the other thing that uh, was messed up on this, there's a bunch of these little oil cups or these little covers here in a few places and uh, I've plucked a few of the uh, the chowdered ones out there uh, that are messed up. And uh, for those of you wondering how you pull those out, let's see if I have them here. Um, you use a pair of diagonal cutters uh, and you very you grab them and then you just kind of lever them out. They're, they're a little bit of a press fit, but it's not anything radical. And uh, anyway, you can pluck those out. McMaster Car sells them, so we'll get some new ones of those. Okay, so let me, let me cruise around over here and we'll, uh, we'll look at the other side here. All right, so this is a, this is a hand uh, um, operation lever. Now I got the belt loose right now. Actually, let's snug that down. Get a little uh, thumb screw over here to kind of tension the belt. Um, I kind of like this cover. This is neat. Uh, I, the, I like the decoration of this cover, but also what's cool is it's a, it's kind of a hinge down thing, and then it's got a uh, some thumb screws to kind of lock it in position. So, and then you can change your speeds here. So, um, we can run this to the back of the stroke. All right. So there, it's getting ready to change direction. And then with this guy up here, we can actually position the ram in relation to the work so that we can kind of get in the right position uh, that we want for that. And then uh, let's keep going here. And there's the, the extent of the stroke there. All right. And there's a turnaround direction there. And so, you know, ideally you want a little bit past uh, the end of your stroke and you want to come up. Well, I don't know, you probably want a quarter of an inch to a half an inch on either end of, uh, of your part to make sure that you're, uh, that you're covering it well and that you can get the tool in and out if you, uh, if you need to. All right. Oh, actually, I'm slipping on this, which is okay. It doesn't really matter. What do you say we plug this thing in and we, uh, we run it a little bit because it's kind of... That's one of the things that's fascinating about these machines is just... Uh, the mechanism and the motion, it's just uh, kind of uh, pleasing in a strange way and, uh, and I'd say almost, uh, almost soothing, okay? So let me plug this in and we'll fire it up. All right, so I got it plugged in. Okay, we clear, we clear there. All right, let's fire it up. See, it's just kind of... I don't know what it is. It's just pleasant, right? They got this little click, 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 you know, kind of uh, noise that they make. And uh, they just stroke back and forth. Now you can probably see it here on the movement. It has the, the, the cutting speed and then it retracts a little bit faster. So that's pretty common on shapers, I think. Uh, hydraulic or mechanical. This looks a little... He's wagging around there a little bit. Anyway, oh yeah, and here you can see the uh, you can see the feed mechanism. So what that's supposed to do is that's supposed to uh, grab the uh, and increment this along, and then by by changing this, it changes the bite so we get more more teeth or less teeth or whatever. So if we go up close to the pivot, it's just feeding a couple little uh, little teeth of the gear in there. Kind of neat, huh? Yeah, there's some, yeah, it's got some problems, but uh, you know what, the price was right. Um, I traded uh, my friend Jeff Tiedekin, uh, Monkey, Likes Likes, Monkey Likes Shiny. I always mess up his goofy name there. Um, Anyway, he's moving a lot of his equipment to a smaller kite shop and uh, he uh, was looking for a home for this and uh, he offered me a deal I couldn't refuse. So uh, 
I traded him a couple of hammers for uh, for this thing. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, better better me getting this than uh, than a scrapper, right? That's what I say. And you can kind of see the uh, you can see the eccentric in there. A little slide bar. So when you loosen the nut on the other side, you can change the stroke. Better not stick my finger in there. Um, in relation to that center point, um, actually, suppose well, I can just turn it off, right? We can talk about it. Um, so there's a slide bar here, and the, so there's the from the center point to there. That's the stroke or the eccentric amount. So you can go down to almost zero. Um, and then it just strokes a very short amount and then you can extend this even farther and it strokes the full the full strength or the full length so now this is officially a seven inch uh, shaper so usually that means the uh, the stroke length so uh, I found a, uh, a manual for this on the vintage machinery.org site that's uh, Keith Rucker's joint and uh, thanks Keith for uh, for keeping all those archives there it was great um, um, I just uh, downloaded it, a little PDF, and I got a manual, like bing, 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 and I'm done. So, uh, pretty cool. Well, that's maximum stroke. Um, and you can see the, the rapid return pretty easily now on the longer stroke. So that's feed, retract, feed, retract. And you can see that, you know, I've been spooching some stuff in there and uh, it's pretty dirty kind of overall really whole thing needs to be taken apart but uh, we're going to play around with it a little before uh, uh, before we uh, before we take it apart alright so let's let's stop and we're going to change the stroke here There's a, an arrow that you line up to change the stroke. It puts that slide, it puts this slide vertical so that you can, uh, you can uh, change the stroke. I'm gonna line up there a little bit. Ah, these things are, I was using a, uh, bar here to help me push it up okay let's push it up a little bit let's go for a real short one there okay something like that look at that and lock this down all right let's try that there you go shorty made out of bronze it looks like that screws a little a little chunky looking there so anyway um all right what else what else can we look at on this thing all right so here's a couple of the problems here it's got some uh some kind of sketchoid electric here no bushing in there and we got a well a spare conductor that's clipped off uh no cover on this and uh um, you know, no bushing or anything there, so that needs to get fixed. I kind of like this switch. I'll probably keep that, although this thing is totally in the way right here, so uh, let me kind of redo that a little bit. Oh, looks like we got a hole right here, so we'll cap that one. We'll bring the power in here that's away from this, and then we'll bring a, a line across over here, maybe a piece of liquid tight or something like that um, to make it nice. Um, I believe they have the wrong drive belt on this because this is one of the guard screws and it interferes with the motor. So the motor, I believe, is supposed to be mounted slightly lower than it is. Uh, so I ordered a I ordered a belt, and then we can use this uh, uh, this the guard retention screw there. Um, we got uh, our ratcheting mechanism. It's got a, a pawl that we have to remake, and uh, there's a couple things that. Uh, appear to 
have a little too much, <laughs> a little too much slack in them. So uh, we'll <laughs> we'll uh, deslackify uh, some of these uh, some of these areas there. So anyway, it'll be fun. Uh, some little minor minor fixes, and then we'll uh, we'll do some cutting with this thing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>